As the old saying goes, you can't take it with you. And a recently unearthed anecdote, courtesy of one of Jackie Kennedy's former flames, proves that the former first lady may have known this all too well. The life of Jackie Kennedy was chic, influential, and devastatingly tragic. And as she approached the end of her life in the early 1990s, she began ritualistically destroying remnants of the soaring highs and sinking lows of her past. Details of these rituals were kept secret by biographer J. Randy Tarabarelli until 2023 at the request of the members of her inner circle. On the surface, the former first lady was a fashion icon who popularized countless trends and designers that remain timeless today. But beneath her vogue exterior, she was a widow living with PTSD, never to be the same after her husband, former President John F. Kennedy, died. His assassination mere inches away from her occurred in 1963 something from which she would later say she never fully recovered, even up to her death in 1994. Indeed, her life story was both glamorous and galvanizing, luxurious and languished, which makes her end-of-life ritual all the more heartbreakingly alluring. Almost immediately, the now-famous Fifth Avenue apartment building resembled a shrine. Hundreds came to see where she had lived and died. Though Jackie Kennedy's time as First Lady ended in 1963, her influence over the public did not. She continued to delight the masses with her style and charm throughout her second marriage to Aristotle Onassis, a Greek shipping magnate who would give Jackie Kennedy her new moniker, Jackie O. But according to J. Randy Tarabarelli's biography, Jackie, Public, Private, and Secret, she also shared a brief affair with John Warnicke, the architect who designed JFK's Arlington National Cemetery Memorial gravesite. Warnicke shared details of his affair with a public figure to Tara Borelli under the condition that the author wouldn't publicize the story until 10 years after he died. Warnicke died in 2010, and the story finally moved into the light. The architect recalled spending time with the former first lady shortly after JFK's death, much to the dismay of her friends and her brother-in-law, Bobby Kennedy. He described a woman unsure of whether she wanted to be alone or in an affair. Ultimately, a phone call Warnicke made to her to disclose his million-dollar debt would end their short-lived relationship. That is, until early 1994, two months before Jackie O would die from the lymphoma that had metastasized to her brain and spinal cord. On this day, she invited Warnicke to her apartment to participate in her solemn and highly secret ritual by the fireplace. John Warnicke recounted the visit to J. Randy Tarabarelli, describing the former first lady in her silk pajamas and chenille sweater as she sat by the fireplace of her Fifth Avenue apartment. Jackie held Warnicke to the same secrecy he would later ask of the biographer, and the ritual began. Warnicke told Tarabarelli, As I took my seat, Jackie handed me a stack of envelopes neatly tied together with yarn. My presence that evening was a part of a ritual. Every night that week, she was inviting a trusted friend or family member to her home to take part in it. The stack of envelopes contained memorabilia and personal correspondence, including letters from Jackie's children, her husbands, and her father. There were also photographs of Jackie and JFK on his inauguration day, which she asked Warnicke to keep. Jackie read each letter in the pile before placing it into the fireplace. Once each piece of paper was burned, the ritual was over, and Warnicke left. One month later, Warnicke recalled speaking to Jackie for the last time over the phone. He told her that he had always loved her, to which Jackie replied, That's such a lovely thing to say. Thank you. I'd like to just leave it there if I may. The following month, Jackie O would enter the ranks of larger-than-life American icons who left before her, cementing her place in history and culture.